So I already know that I wrote this out, but I was also reminded that maybe I couldn't do like a video just to say the prayer and then explain John 14, 1 through 6, like how it spoke to me and how he broke off like worries and anxieties. But before I begin, let me just pray. So Father God, I thank you for your word. And I pray, Lord, that whoever listens to this, Lord, that they may be touched. They may be touched, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, bring your word alive. I thank you, Father God, that it breaks off chains and yokes right now. That your anointing destroys yokes right now in the name and the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that all worries and anxieties shall flee right now. For perfect love casts out all fear. So I thank you, Father God, that you speak during this time. And no one else in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So... I had written down some things, um, yeah, but I guess I, sharing it would also be slightly different because I'm looking at the scripture itself. I'm not looking at what I had written and posted. Um, yeah, but I remember going over John 14 verse 1 through 6 with a, another sister and we were doing prayer and Bible study and it spoke to me because the first thing that he says is let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me and it's like i have been i guess grappling with that a little bit and how even as we even as i continue to follow god like there's those times and moments of anxieties and worries um i don't think anybody's exempt from that you know but I love that it's so personal. I love that when he says, let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. And I wrote this down too. Um, but it's, I love that he says, let not your heart be troubled. Because that means one, he cares for our hearts, which may seem obvious, but I like that he addresses our heart. Let not your heart be troubled. And it's exactly where he dwells, you know, um, so I love I love the the closeness of what he's saying here and when he says you believe in God believe also in me to me it sounds like you know you you believe in God up in heaven right but I'm right here and God sent me here I'm right here believe also in me right and so I love that I love I don't know if anybody is hearing it in the same way but it's there's just this intimacy that I hear from this reading and I love that even in verse 2 it says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And it's, sorry, going back even to the first one. I, I'm still stuck on it. I'm still stuck on it because he says like, Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. There's like this pleading that I hear and this earnestness in his voice. And he's not just saying like God is up in heaven, but I'm here, right here. Believe also in me. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. And I think somebody actually looked it up like how many times he says like do not fear. Right. And I think it's like 365 apparently for like every day of the year. So that says a lot. <laughs> that says a lot. That says a lot. So he knows he's aware that this is something that we think about every day, you know, um, in small ways. Like, yeah. And he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I love that. I love the fact that he says, I would have told you. Because it's, it's like, it's this closeness again. It's this closeness. Like, I have been with the father. I've been there. And I'm telling you all these things. Why wouldn't I also tell you what's in heaven and what's not there? Like, if there weren't any mentions, I would tell you. I would tell you that there weren't. But because there is, I'm letting you know. And I love that he, like, there's, because he's always, like, sharing these intimate things with the disciples, you know? He's always telling them. And it's not like he's withholding or, um not sharing all things he, like only to the extent that he knows right 
because the father knows all things and even the father knows when jesus will return and even jesus doesn't know right so not all things but whatever that he knows in his heart that he can share he desires to share with us so it's like this intimacy this closeness and he says i go to prepare a place for you like he's saying i'm not just leaving you behind i'm not there's no there's no like it has a plan and a purpose i'm going to prepare a place for you i just love that i just love that, that he came here to one in this scripture to one to not only tell us not to be worried but also that hey i'm leaving but it's not without a plan or a purpose it's actually still for you i came for you and when i leave i'm also going to be preparing things for you when you come so i love that he came down to tell us that you know and there's this intimacy because god didn't have to do that you know he he could have just told us from heaven or like made a sign or a wonder or like give us a dream or a vision and that's it but he came down personally and he does that because like god is so complete like he didn't just make creation the heavens and earth and you and i and he's just like okay you live and when you come you come like that's not that's not his heart it's more like i also want to walk in this life with you i started everything i finished everything and everything in between i'm walking you through and it's like if i prepare a place for you my thought is or is already inclined to think okay then how much more like do you also have things planned here and how much more do you have things like being brought forth every day and like your goodness planned every day you know it can't just be like oh you're here just to make a way of not just to make a way the way of salvation is important it's everything i know that but it's like we still want more like we still want heaven with us even as we're walking the earth this earth like we want his peace we want that fellowship that intimacy throughout you know so i just i love that and he says and if i go this is verse three um i'm also reading new king james version sorry and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also so i love that he's saying like i'm telling you i'm going but i'm also telling you that i'll come back and when i come back I want I come back because I want you for me I'm gonna take you like into my bosom like you're coming with me I'm coming for you you know and he says that where I am there you may be also and I love that heart because um <sighs> I try not to cry it's like every video it was just really hard because I'm trying not to cry <laughs> but um I hear that intimacy like when he says that where I am there you may be also because he desires for us to be with him and it's it's so real like his desire to be with us and his desire to carry us forth to things um yeah um like when he says that where I am there you may be also like, I just love that he's complete and he keeps taking care of things. You know, he's not, um, sorry. He's not just, um, here to do that one thing and then leave. Um, but he, nothing like the father's love to want to have us for eternity, to always just want to be with us, probably more than we want to be with him, you know, um, not as a condemnation, but like, as a reality of being in the flesh as a reality though i know that our souls and our spirits desire to be with him all the time and to be filled with him all the time you know and i love that in verse four he says and where i go you know and the way you know and when i read that it tells me i just had a sense like he he was saying that because he truly believes that we do know where he's going and the way we do know because these disciples are hanging around with him for a reason like that they've tasted the truth they've seen life they've seen healing they've seen miraculous things but they also know that he walks around with true power of god with the true spirit of god and so he's saying you do know you follow me because you do know i am the way and you 
do know where I'm going because I, I'm not from here. I have to go, you know? And so there's just, I felt like this, this intrinsic knowing of what he's placed in us, what our soul knows, what our spirit knows that maybe our minds have not caught up to yet. And we haven't understood fully, you know, in our minds, but because he knows what is in us, what he's placed in us, he knows, he knows that desire in our hearts. There's a knowing in us. That's why like a lot of people, when they have an encounter with God, when they have an encounter with Jesus, they know, like in the spirit, you will know, even if you've never believed in your entire life, when you have an encounter with God, when you have an encounter with Jesus, you know, your spirit, your soul knows. There's no denial. There's no confusion. You know, whether or not you accept is a different issue, is a different, you know, decision that you make. But um, I'm sorry, I just feel in my heart. Father God, I pray that whoever's listening, that they have a personal encounter with you, Lord, and that it changes their entire life. And if they've already met you, but need a fresh encounter, Father God, may you give them a fresh encounter to know that you care for them, every single desire, every single need, that they, their heart shall not be even troubled, but Father, that you have prepared a mansion, and if you've done it so in heaven, you've done even greater preparations about things on earth to get us there, to get us safely, and that you will come again for us, and in doing so, in that waiting, you are not waiting, you are always preparing, you are always making way. So I thank you, Father God, for this encounter that they have and that their soul and their spirit shall know and recognize. In Jesus' name, amen. And so Thomas also says to him, so I love that God includes the question that Thomas had because, look, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? And I love that because it captures this, this rare, to me it feels rare, like this moment, this rare dialogue between creation and the creator of what do you mean? Like, how do I get there? Where can I go? Like, what does that mean? And I feel like this, this question encompasses everything that we have been searching for all our lives. And there's a search in our hearts, this innate search in our hearts for the truth, for the real, for something greater than just like, desires pleasures passion recognition like all these things like there's this desire and it's encapsulated in this short conversation this short dialogue and so i love that he includes what thomas said he says we do not know where you're going and how can we know the way something that we've all been asking right and it's like if we don't if we came into this world one way there's only one way to exit and there's only one way to get into heaven, you know, or get into hell even. There's only just one way. If, you know what I mean? If if there were different avenues in which we could go to different places after in the afterlife and stuff like that, if that were true, then we would not have been born through one womb. We would not have been born through the union of one man and one woman. You know what I mean? We, You know, and conceived in that way. And even if it's like IVF. You still have to be born through a woman, you know? So it's like, it's just this one way. It's very clear. And when you leave this earth, you're not going to be leaving through a rabbit hole or like a rock. You're going to be leaving through death, this earth, right? And so the same for eternity. There's only one, like one eternity. There's only one heaven, one, one hell. Like there's no... I hope I'm explaining this correctly. Like... I'm not sure, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave it at that. And yeah, okay. And so Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I love that he answers that question. And like, I just love that a lot of people are looking for meaning in their lives. Like I have done the same thing. We're looking for meaning in our lives. We're looking for a purpose. We're looking for all these things. What can satisfy us? What can what can make us feel feel like fulfilled? What what can make us feel like our life has purpose? And I love that it's not it's not this, it's not that. You know what I mean? Like if it's 
If our purpose in life, we will only find it in becoming a CEO, then everybody should be becoming a CEO, right? Or if our life's fulfillment was to become a gardener, then everybody should become like a gardener. But I love that that's not the answer. I love that what we are looking for is not a method. It's not a way. It's not a strategy. It's not fame and glory. It's, it's, it's not any of these things, but it's a person. And that makes so much sense to me because probably the deepest desire in our hearts, more than our passions, more than our desires, more than feeling fulfilled, more than feeling any purpose in our life is actually feeling loved, feeling loved and accepted. And I love that that longing, that that's the greatest and deepest desire we have and the greatest fulfillment is through Jesus Christ. Like this is, we're not looking. I don't know if people are aware of this, but we're not looking for a way to live the perfect life. What we actually need is an encounter with, with a being, with, with God himself that answers the question, who am I? What am I here for? And what is this loneliness that I feel, this void in my heart that I feel, that I'm searching and trying to appease and trying to find ways to satisfy? And so I love that Jesus makes it clear. He says, what you're looking for is me. And I've come for that reason. Because otherwise you're going to be wandering. Otherwise you'll be lost and I do not want you to be lost. And so I love that he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so we can have life abundantly in him. And he's not just the way to heaven because like he came from the father, right? And only the son would know and be able to open that door to the father because he's been in the house he's from the father you know what i mean you're not going to knock at somebody's door and a stranger of that house is going to open the door and say hi yeah welcome in no it's going to be either the parent or the child or a family member that's going to open that door you know and so i love that the son is doing this and that's what the son is for and he's saying no one can come except through me because he's from the Father, he's of the Father, they are one. And I love that they came together so that they can have us, they can make a way for us. And I don't know if this is the best way to explain it or the most eloquent way, but it's how it's coming to me and how it's coming to my heart. Um, yeah, so I pray that you have not only this encounter, but that with your mouth you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, he's the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one Father, you know? There's only one Father, there's only one source of love that we can grasp onto. There's only one place. And he's not a God of confusion. He's not gonna tell you, like, there's gonna be 16 different um, saints or like 16 different, you know, I don't know, methods, meditations to get to me. Like, he's not... Love is so simple. Love is so simple. And it has to be because the truth is simple and the truth is profound because it is simple and yet it can encompass so much. And love is so simple. And love is profound because it still encompasses so much. And love is that breakthrough that makes the way, you know, that gives us the truth for what really matters and fills us up really to do anything and you know love, love will just break the walls it'll it'll make you go crazy it will you won't be afraid of anything you know and I feel like when he says perfect love cast off fear that's what he's talking about and I I want more of it you know so I don't know if you're a believer or not but if you haven't received him like this is your chance this is your opportunity and to have a real encounter with this love, you just say, you know, God, I am a sinner. Thank you for forgiving me for my sins. Thank you for loving me. I thank you, Father. I have been searching all the days of my life. I have been looking everywhere. I've been looking to people. I've been looking to methods. I've been looking to ways. But thank you, Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And I confess this. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit, for I cannot live this life without your power, without your indwelling, 
and without communion with you. So fill me with the Holy Spirit to do whatever you've called me to do. To live this life in communion with you. I always want to be with you. I want a heart for the things that are in your heart, you know. And you just say, in Jesus' name, amen. It's very, it's just very simple. Like, it's the same thing. Like, when you're filled with love for, like, something, or, like, you're filled with love for someone, you cannot just keep it inside. It's like, yeah, I love, I love. No, you you say, like, I love tacos, or, like, like I love so-and-so so much. Like, you cannot contain it. Like, it's just, you have to express it. So it's the same way. When you do the confessions prayer, it's not just, like, it's not just you rattling off a list of your sins and everything, which, which yes, do. Yes, do, so that you can be broken off of all those things through forgiveness, through grace, through an encounter. But, um, sorry, I'm trying really hard not to cry. Um, I'm trying to absorb it back in. Expand job. I'm trying to absorb it back in. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, that's why we confess, because... There's such power in confession, but it's it's this love, this real encounter. You cannot keep it inside, you know? That's why you're going to see many videos, people just talking about Jesus, talking about his love, because it cannot it cannot be contained, and it has to it has to come out, you know? And there's this constant overflowing of it. You, you just, the more you pour out, the more you receive. So the more you're reminded of that grace, the more your heart softens and everything. So anyway... Um, I just bless you and I thank you Father God for this word I thank you Father God that you fill in the gaps Holy Spirit right now because I I, I don't know um, you have to fill in the gaps and meet every person that hears this personally and deliver them give them that love encounter that sets them free from every worry and anxiety for perfect love cast off fear and that Father you you prepare everything in heaven. You prepared everything on earth before we were born. That there was a ground to step on. There was a tree to look at. There were there were people around us to love us already. So how much more things on this earth that we are counting in our hands for breakthrough. And how much more for even things in heaven that you prepare. Because you are just delighted to receive us on the last day, Lord. So I thank you, Father God. I thank you for many that shall come to you, Lord. Have an encounter with you through this video. They shall come to you in confession. And live their lives wholly devoted to you. To love you with all their heart, mind, body, and soul. The way that you did, Jesus. And the way that you laid your life down. To exactly demonstrate that, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for being faithful. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being love. I thank you, Father God, for being love. I thank you for being faithful, Lord. In your mercy and your grace. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ.